All right, everybody, welcome back to Take Flight Garage. So this is gonna be kind of a, an interesting vi video, and it's gonna be covering a, a couple of topics here. And the first thing that I wanna start off with is a couple goodies. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that I'd like to mention is, this is really awesome uh, fuel pressure gauge that uh, one of my viewers actually sent to me, which is really cool. And I'm super appreciative of it. And I ha I have to try to figure out a way to make this work because the way that this is actually set up, this is from Lindsay Racing, but it's meant to work with the factory rail. So they sell an adapter that goes onto the end of your factory rail and then this will screw into it so that you can actually have a fuel pressure gauge on the car. Now I'm sure that there's some sort of way to get this to work via adapters or fittings, maybe to screw off of the... Uh, the damper port up there so i'm sure there's a way to get that to work i might end up going with a digital fuel pressure gauge but nonetheless uh the gesture was really really awesome and i'm super appreciative and it's really cool to be able to connect with people like that and so i wanted to give them a shout out so thank you so much and uh i will figure out a way to put this to good use because i think it's awesome but i uh, if anyone out there is looking to do some small modifications i think that one of these is the quickest way to go to be able to just tell what your fuel pressure is at all times. And it should clear. It's meant, it's designed to clear the hood when it's closed, at least for the factory rail. So Lindsay Racing, go check those out if you're interested. It's cheaper than the, uh, the digital fuel pressure gauge I had from Speed Hut from on the last car. And... I've actually been out of commission for a couple of days because I've been sick. And the car was actually out of commission for a little bit. Went out for a drive, came home, noticed it was running a little bit hot, not overheating, and realized that my cooling fans weren't coming on. And so I'm kind of at this threshold now where I need this car to be reliable and bulletproof. And with my experience of owning the last car, I know that there's certain things, and it's primarily the electrical system, where it's 40 years old and it's heat cycled, where I'm just going to start replacing whatever I can, especially the key primary components, such as the DME and whatever relays. So, <clears throat> in one blow, I went ahead and ordered the set of solid state relays from Focus 9. So those are really awesome to have. And these are well worth the money. So this is a solid state DME relay, which means no more mechanical relay. So no more mechanical failures option there. It's no more moving components. It's much more reliable. And I'll keep the solid, st I'll keep the uh, original relay in the glove box just as a backup, just in case. But on top of this being a solid state and more modern component, it also gives you diagnostics. So when you cycle the key, it will tell you a signal to the fuel pump. It will tell you that you have power to the fuel pump. It will tell you that uh, the fuel injection system is getting power, which means your ignition system is working. So all those sensors, your uh, coolant temp sensor, your a AFM, your uh, speed and reference sensors, all that sort of stuff, which is all tied together. Your ignition circuit, is all tied in and this these will all light up because they all tap in to the DME so if it sees a signal from any of those things then they'll illuminate and let you know that the car is working this specific one also has a pump prime so a lot of people when they get 944s and they're not running and they immediately turn the key they listen for a fuel pump and they don't hear it run and they assume that the fuel pump is bad what that actually is is the fuel pump doesn't turn engage until the engine uh, until the dme itself sees 200 rpm from your speed and reference sensors here and that's an accident feature in case you would get hit the car needs to see a couple things before you see voltage to the fuel pump and that's your again that's 200 rpm minimum f from your speed and reference sensors so that's the flywheel spinning at 200 rpm and at least one bar of oil pressure. So your oil pressure sending unit needs to also be working. Again, that's all tied through to the control for the fuel pump. And what that was is just an accident safety feature. For example, if you get hit, 
um, and the car stalls, there's not going to be forced power to the fuel pump. And this in the same way works in the same way where until the key is cycled, it's not going to uh, provide power to the fuel pump. But with that fuel pump prime feature, when the key is cycled, it'll prime the pump for about two or three seconds and then um, <clears throat> you're good to go. So that's a really cool thing to have. And as well, I got the uh, solid state fan relay because I was already having some issues with my fans where they were just kicking on and off at weird times. It never promoted overheating or put me in a situation like that. But when I got home the other day, I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to save myself some time and order this anyways. Because with the diagnostics on here will let you to automatically test the low speed fan circuit and the high speed, high speed fan circuit. Now you can to the high speed while the car is off. But you can see, you can just come up here to the relay and check your temperature switch. You can see what the call is calling for based on the temp of the car and if your fans are both working. So thankfully now my driver's side or my passenger side fan is working completely as it should. It works the way that it should with the AC on, with the AC off. It cycles correctly uh, when the car calls for the temperatures. The only thing that's unfortunate is, and it's led to the discovery of another problem, my driver's side fan has totally quit. So that sucks. Now the good news is, I believe that back that one of the two fans is just a backup. It's there to provide auxiliary cooling. It's not um, going to hurt the car if the car's only operating on one fan. Now it's not ideal, and I don't recommend going on a trip like that, but it should be able to get you A to B safely without um, harming the engine. So that leads me to the next couple things that, that are going to be on the way in the next segment of this video, which is going to be plans for the car. I made a video after I bought the car and brought it home not too long after discussing plans and things that I have for the car. And now that it's been a couple years, I've done a couple things um, and a couple things have happened. You know, your perspective changes and things. <clears throat> I, ha I have a new set of plans and I, there's some things that I would really like to get done to this car. Uh, as beautiful as it is, it made me not want to touch it. And because of everything that had happened to the other car, there was a little bit of trauma there with all the work I had put in to that 83 to have it get hit and to lose all of that time. And it, it just seemed overwhelming. And to know that this car is such a good set of bones, it has such a good you know, skeleton underneath it that I don't need to be worrying about certain things out of necessity. It will allow me to do some things to sort of upgrade some of the electronics and improve the reliability as opposed to chasing down problems and, and other sort of things. So now instead of spending three years trying to run through my wiring harness, I can just check this and that leads me to the next major component that I'm planning on upgrading is the DME itself. The DME itself, I'm planning on going with the Focus 9 Sport uh, DME. Basically upgrades all the electronics, all the resistors, uh, everything right down to the PCB of the, the DME itself. It uses much more modern components. And uh, yeah, that's, I think, job necessity number one. Because in addition to the diagnostics of this relay, you can also add... At additional cost uh, an OBD board that will allow you to plug into any sort of Windows device and log the car so onboard diagnostics on an engine that's already pretty easily to work on but can be a little fiddly with 40 year old electronics I think is key and that also allows you to do a couple things you know it's not again not much it's not gonna make the car lightning quick especially as with its NA configuration but it allows you some sort of upgradeability and some slight tunability. So I think that's number one, and that's vital because there's three components that always go horribly wrong. And if it's not the timing belt and the water pump and the DME relay, it's going to be the DME itself. And that can lead you down a whole host of other things. So I think that's necessity number one. So I'll have a modern, the fuel system will be entirely gone through at that point. The electrical or the ignition system, save for the uh, ignition coil and the ignition switch will be virtually brand new. 
<clears throat> I take that back, actually. The cap and rotor um, probably at some point could be replaced due to just preventative maintenance. But for now, they're working, so I'm not worried about it. Um, and then along with that upgrade will allow me to swap out the, the AFM because I'm now on AFM number two and it's starting to act up. So <clears throat> I think swapping over to the AFM along with having that slight bump in uh, airflow from the exhaust, I think are going to be two things that will wake this engine up a little bit. And I think as far as tuning or performance mods that's probably as far as i'm gonna go short of needing like a head rebuild or something like that i'm not gonna have the intake pulled off and ported and polished i'm not gonna get a valve job done unless i need it so for now i that's those are the short-term goals as to where i want the car to sit it's already got a bmc panel filter in it um i don't know that i want to switch to k and n i had a k and n in the other car and i never had any problems so we'll see they essentially do the same thing but uh as far as that goes that leads me to a couple of the other things that i want to do just to improve the driving experience and that's going to be eventually because everything is still relatively fresh brakes i think i would like to go with another set of slotted rotors this time on all four corners tires i'm not really sure these still have a lot of life and meat left on them but uh, i think this time around uh provided i can afford it i might try to go for those pirellis in the factory size <clears throat> as that's what would have come on these when they were new and then suspension i would love i would absolutely love to get a fresh set of coney inserts on here with poly bushings on the control arms or at least poly bushings on the end link <clears throat> sway bar and it's already got the uh suspension package on the rear but some coney uh coney shocks in the rear i think would be awesome i think that would bring this car to a completely different level without going as far as taking a really clean 944 and um you know modifying it to the point where it uh is too much of a different car it's it's you know, no longer able to be considered stockish in a way. I, like in a, more of an OEM plus kind of configuration is what I'm looking at doing. And again, uh, a bunch of that cost is all coming from just looking at reliability improvement here. And I, you can't really fault a car for 40-year-old, you know, electronics. I mean, look how well it's held up during all this time. But if, uh, if you're interested in seeing any of that stuff happen and... Uh, any of those products then stay tuned because uh i damn well will be buying them on my own and you you'll get a, a first-hand review of what i think of the purchasing experience and stuff like that and i can say with the the Lindsay kit again there were a couple hiccups but i absolutely i have no problems ordering from them again focus nine tech uh, he's actually local to me so the shipping was quick and again the products are just they're top tier they're exactly what i'd expect for the money that i'm paying and i'm super happy with those purchases and i feel confident reassured and that brings me to kind of a third thing here is we're almost at the two-year mark of that accident for me it's march 2023 now and i got hit in uh march of 21 and there's a reason for me wanting to do as much as i can in as little time as possible and keep it all consistent and that's due to insurance purposes because, and this is a good tip I think for anyone to have, and I'm keeping it towards the end of the video if you're still interested, because if you have one of these cars and you start doing all this work and you get hit, it's going to be a fight. And the more things that you get done and you keep receipts for all at the same time, should something happen within 12 calendar months of you getting hit, all of those receipts you can keep and will be refunded as part of the value of the car when they assess it. So if I were taking, again, years to do all of this and my $700 fuel rail is 13 months out and my $300 in solid state relays and let's say, you know, four, 500 bucks for that DME and I'm doing all this stuff all at separate times, if I get hit again, uh, I'm putting myself in a situation where I can't recover any of that cost and all that stuff is gone. 
at least with the current insurance setup that's with the car. So that's kind of another reason why if you're going to work on one of these cars and you're going to own it and daily it, that's fine. But rather than spending, you know, chunks of money here and there, I think it's better to save up a little bit and order some of the big things all at the same time. Keep all of those receipts, log them, log when you installed them, take photos, take videos, do whatever you can and make sure that if anything ever happens to your car, that you get compensated for at least the cost of the products because your work and your time and effort are not going to get paid for. And uh, that was a big part of the reason why I didn't want to touch this car. I've been, it's not fun to talk about, but I mean, it's traumatic putting in time and effort into something and then absolutely losing all of it. It takes sort of the fun away out of doing any sort of modification to your car performance wise or, or other words, because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, wow, you know, I just did all this and it was, you know, God forbid something happens. I'm, I'm it's just worthless. And it's, uh, to be perfectly blunt, that's a totally shitty way to enjoy or to own a sports car. That's, that really sucks. But, uh, it's been a couple years with this car now and I'm starting to feel finally to the point where it's my car and I can do whatever I want with it. And I think like an OEM plus or a 944, say like GTS model, where we got some beefed up suspension. We have a couple little performance mods, but no heavy engine tuning, you know, maybe making an extra 10% or 12% power over stock with a couple added upgrades. And I think this thing would just be an absolute killer in every circumstance. You could take it to a Concours. You could take it to work. You could take it to a DE event. You could take it to uh, uh, cars and coffee. And it's just, it's perfect in every single scenario. Or you can cruise in, you know, triple digit speeds on the Autobahn. Like this car would just be the perfect all-rounder. And as far as the interior goes, I don't know. I wish that I could maybe do something to where we could work to get a set of backlit gauges. I think that would be awesome. Because the, again, the PCB that's behind there is pretty old and pretty frail. So I'm sure that there's a way that that can be handled. But a set of custom gauges might be interesting. But without taking any of the character away from the car. So, but I'm happy with the sound setup. I'm happy with the cosmetics and the way the car is set up. I don't really think I would change anything about the seats or the leather for right now. Just maintain its condition. But all that stuff is sort of down the road. The next thing that I need to do is it's been a couple of years since I last put on a ceramic coating. We've had a couple of rainstorms here. So she needs to get detailed, washed and prepped and ready for the week. To address that cooling fan system, that's kind of the, or that cooling fan situation, that's kind of the primary focus for right now. So I'll be ordering that CSF uh, cooling fan kit. It's two dual nine inch spall fans with an aluminum housing and it will fit both an OEM radiator. I need a radiator at some point anyways. So I was looking at that kit, but it'll help me kind of split up that cost because that's, you know, over a grand right there. But, uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be an interesting video to make and some food for thought for you guys who are working on your car. And uh, I thought it might be kind of fun to finally open myself up a little bit here and broaden my horizons and talk about some plans that I'd, I'd love to do for this car. So let me know what you think, and I hope that helps. I hope uh, I might have piqued your interest in some of this stuff to doing to your own car if you drive it a lot and you just want it to have a little bit more peace of mind about what you're driving and the whole purpose of why I started this channel and why I, I'm why I even started my company is to show you that no matter who you are or what your background is or what your budget is you can always do something that people tell you is difficult or impossible to do you can do it on your own and you can be successful at it and you can enjoy it it doesn't always have to be you know, oh, it's an impossible thing or, oh, you can't do that. I think anyone can own one of these cars and anyone can maintain it in the same way that I think that, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, there's still a way that you can learn how to fly or learn how to do whatever you're doing. 
And that's really what the symbolism of this car is to me. So it's the reality. It's making something that you want or something that you think should be secondary a reality and a primary thing and get good use out of it as well as, you know, enjoyment and learn from it and grow from that and be a better person and meet new people and all those sort of experiences. And it's a lot of stuff that I'm reflecting on around this time period. But um, anyways, this video is long enough. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.